Selamat datang di channel Suara Papua ID. Di sini, kami akan membahas isu penting mengenai penentuan nasib sendiri bagi rakyat Papua Barat, termasuk pernyataan tegas dari Duta Besar Republik Kepulauan Marshall untuk PBB, Honorable Elizabeth Kabua. Mari kita delve lebih dalam tentang hak asasi manusia dan dukungan internasional yang diperlukan untuk perjuangan keadilan di Papua. Terima kasih telah bergabung. Dari pimpinan eksekutif Gerakan Pembebasan Bersatu Papua Barat, UMUK, di New York, 26 September 2024. Teman-teman terkasih, sekutu, dan pemimpin dunia, dan kepada seluruh rakyat bangsa Papua. Sebagai kepala misi umum di Amerika, Kanada, dan Karibia, saya mengucapkan terima kasih yang tulus kepada Presiden Republik Kepulauan Marshall, yang terhormat Hilda Heine, atas keberaniannya mengangkat isu Papua Barat selama debat publik di Majelis Umum PBB. Suaranya yang gigi dalam mengadvokasi hak asasi manusia dan penentuan nasib sendiri bagi rakyat Papua Barat telah memecahkan keheningan global mengenai perjuangan kami. Solidaritas dan kepemimpinannya adalah kontribusi tak ternilai bagi tujuan kami. Momen ini menjadi tongga penting dalam upaya diplomatik umum di bawah kepemimpinan Presiden Manasa Tabuni di Tanah Air dan Wakil Presiden Octavianus Mote di Amerika, didukung oleh jaringan misi kami di seluruh dunia. Ini mencerminkan kekuatan kolektif dan solidaritas internasional yang telah kami bangun. Kami sangat terinspirasi oleh pengakuan yang semakin luas atas nasib orang-orang Papua Barat, baik di Pasifik maupun di seluruh dunia. Perjuangan kami adalah untuk hak-hak dasar, kebebasan, penentuan nasib sendiri, dan hidup tanpa rasa takut di bawah rezim yang menindas. Kami menyerukan kepada masyarakat internasional untuk bersatu dan menuntut Indonesia menghormati komitmennya terhadap hak asasi manusia, perdamaian, dan keadilan. Ini adalah saat kritis bagi gerakan kami, dan dengan dukungan pemimpin global seperti Presiden Hilda, kita semakin dekat untuk mewujudkan impian kebebasan. Atas nama umum dan masyarakat Papua Barat, kami menyampaikan apresiasi mendalam dan komitmen kami untuk melanjutkan perjuangan hingga rakyat kami merdeka. Duta Besar Republik Kepulauan Marshall, Honorable Elizabeth Kabua, telah berbicara secara tegas tentang pentingnya penentuan nasib sendiri bagi rakyat Papua Barat di Forum PBB. Dalam pernyataannya, ia menekankan bahwa hak untuk menentukan nasib sendiri adalah prinsip fundamental dalam hukum internasional dan merupakan hak yang harus dihormati oleh semua negara. Kabua menyerukan kepada komunitas internasional untuk memberikan dukungan kepada rakyat Papua Barat dalam perjuangan mereka untuk kebebasan dan keadilan, serta mendorong dialog yang konstruktif antara pihak-pihak terkait. Komitmennya terhadap hak asasi manusia dan keadilan sosial memberikan harapan bagi mereka yang berjuang untuk hak-hak mereka di Papua. Berikut adalah yang menjadi pertimbangan mengenai pelanggaran HAM berat yang terjadi di Papua dari dahulu hingga saat ini. 1. Penembakan di luar hukum Anggota TNI dan Polri sering terlibat dalam penembakan warga sipil tanpa proses hukum yang jelas. Kasus seperti ini biasanya terjadi dalam konteks operasi keamanan di mana warga yang tidak bersalah menjadi korban. Penembakan ini menciptakan ketakutan di masyarakat dan mengikis kepercayaan publik terhadap institusi keamanan. 2. Penyiksaan Banyak tahanan politik dan aktivis yang mengalami penyiksaan fisik dan psikologis saat ditangkap. Metode penyiksaan yang umum meliputi pemukulan, penghilangan makanan, dan intimidasi. Penyiksaan ini seringkali dilakukan untuk memaksa pengakuan atau mengintimidasi orang lain agar tidak berani bersuara. Tiga, penghilangan paksa. Banyak aktivis dan warga yang berjuang untuk hak-hak Papua dilaporkan hilang tanpa jejak. Penghilangan ini seringkali dilakukan oleh aparat keamanan yang ingin menghilangkan suara kritis. Keluarga korban seringkali tidak mendapatkan informasi yang jelas tentang keberadaan orang yang hilang. Empat, Diskriminasi rasial Masyarakat Papua sering mengalami diskriminasi dalam akses pendidikan, pekerjaan, dan layanan publik. Mereka sering dianggap inferior dan tidak mendapatkan perlakuan yang setara dengan warga dari daerah lain. Diskriminasi ini menambah ketidakadilan sosial dan ekonomi yang dirasakan masyarakat Papua. 5. Pembunuhan berencana 
Beberapa kasus pembunuhan terhadap aktivis dan warga sipil yang dianggap mengancam kepentingan pemerintah telah terjadi. Kasus-kasus ini seringkali tidak diselidiki secara serius, menciptakan rasa impunitas bagi pelaku dan semakin memperburuk situasi HAM di Papua. 6. Penggusuran Paksa Proyek-proyek infrastruktur dan eksploitasi sumber daya alam seringkali dilakukan tanpa memberi ganti rugi yang layak kepada masyarakat adat. Penggusuran ini mengakibatkan hilangnya tempat tinggal dan mata pencaharian, serta menciptakan ketegangan antara masyarakat dan pemerintah. 7. Pembatasan kebebasan berekspresi Penangkapan terhadap jurnalis dan aktivis yang melaporkan pelanggaran atau mengkritik pemerintah semakin sering terjadi. Pembatasan ini menciptakan suasana ketakutan yang menghalangi kebebasan berpendapat dan menyampaikan informasi. 8. Perusakan lingkungan Aktivitas perusahaan besar, seperti pertambangan dan perkebunan, seringkali merusak lingkungan hidup masyarakat adat. Kerusakan lingkungan ini mengancam sumber mata pencaharian mereka, seperti pertanian dan perikanan, serta kesehatan ekosistem. 9. Pelanggaran hak atas kesehatan Akses terhadap layanan kesehatan di Papua sangat terbatas, terutama di daerah terpencil. Masyarakat seringkali kesulitan mendapatkan perawatan medis yang memadai, yang mengakibatkan tingginya angka kematian dan penyakit. 10. Militerisasi wilayah Pengerahan pasukan militer yang berlebihan di daerah-daerah konflik seringkali menciptakan ketakutan di kalangan warga sipil. Keberadaan militer yang terus-menerus menimbulkan suasana intimidasi dan kekerasan, serta membatasi mobilitas dan kebebasan masyarakat. Pelanggaran-pelanggaran ini menambah penderitaan yang dialami masyarakat Papua dan membutuhkan perhatian serta tindakan dari komunitas internasional untuk menegakkan hak asasi manusia di wilayah tersebut. Terima kasih telah menyaksikan pembahasan kami di channel Suara Papua ID tentang penentuan nasib sendiri bagi rakyat Papua Barat dan pernyataan penting dari Duta Besar Elizabeth Kabua. We must also find money wherever we can. Instead of rewarding some of the richest and most polluting businesses on the planet, we should repurpose these funds to the rollout of renewables and to directly supporting the poorest and most vulnerable. Right now in the IMO, Pacific Island negotiators are leading efforts to agree on a universal greenhouse gas levy, which gives the right incentive to drive decarbonization of the shipping industry and raises revenue in the billions, a portion of which should be used to address the climate impacts from shipping pollution and help build resilience in vulnerable countries. I urge every country to join us. The Marshall Islands emphasizes the importance of the advisory opinion from the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea regarding the marine environment from climate-driven pollution. We look forward to the advisory opinion from the International Court of Justice regarding the climate obligation of states. Madam President, The Marshall Islands experienced 67 known atmos- atmospheric nuclear tests between 1946 and 1958, resulting in an ongoing legacy of death, illness, and contamination. The impacts are handed down generation to generation. These impacts continue to challenge our human rights. In our culture, our identity is our land. Testing impacts left behind deep scars with communities remaining in exile from their home islands, billions of dollars in unmet adjudicated claims, and a social and environmental burden upon our young, youngest and future generations. To help ensure nuclear risk is eliminated, the Marshall Islands is working towards accession to the 1963 partial test ban treaty, as well as the Treaty of Raratonga and its nuclear free zone. Madam President, we did not choose this nuclear fate. It was chosen for us. UN trusteeship resolution 1082 and 1493 were adopted in 1954 and 1956, respectively, 
despite petitions to the contrary by our Marshallese leaders. These tests were undertaken by the United States acting as the United Nations administering authority. These resolutions remain the only time in which any UN organ has ever explicitly authorized the detonation of nuclear weapons. We cannot undo the past. But as a United Nations, we owe it to ourselves to make amends through the adoption of a resolution which formally apologizes for the failure to heed the petition of the Marshallese people. By doing so, all of us will begin the process of healing and to reestablish faith and trust in this institution. Madam President, our strong work on human rights and nuclear testing impacts is a fundamental and foundational effort to address transitional human rights. And we call attention to document HRC 57 77, the report of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights on the nuclear legacy in the Marshall Islands and its human rights impacts. In particular, I emphasize my nation's unequivocal support for the High Commissioner's important conclusions and recommendations on further action for my own government, for the United States, and for the United Nations. Madam Pr President, as a nuclear affected state, we seek to work with other affected nations and peoples, including Kiribati, French Polynesia, Australia, Algeria, Kazakhstan, North Korea, and the Xinjiang province of mainland China, and within the United States. All should realize that the responsibility to fully address the harms resulting from the use, detonation, or testing of nuclear weapons lies respectively with the member states that have done so. This is the basis of UN General Assembly Resolution 78-240 on victim assistance and environmental remediation. And all must know that the scars upon our collective lands and peoples are firm lessons for nuclear weapons elimination. Madam President, the Marshall Islands welcomes this year's adoption of the Antigua and Barbuda Agenda for SIDS as a companion to the 2050 strategy for the Blue Pacific continent. It is vital that island-driven strategies are better addressed. We are particularly pleased to welcome the strong efforts of the new UN multi-country office for the North Pacific in the Federated States of Micronesia, and we look forward to a groundbreaking ceremony for the new UN complex. Madam President, this year's Triennial Conference of Pacific Women hosted in the Marshall Islands demonstrated the region's continued commitment to advancing gender equality with a focus on the health of women and girls, gender responsive climate justice, and gender-based violence to strengthen and uplift women and girls across the Pacific. It is important in our work going forward that we progress national implementation at scale and builds intersections with UN women and international system assistance, including as a full region and with the UN North Pacific Multi-Country Office. Madam President, we have long understood island-led security in our region, but for many, we are only starting to build formal security foundations at a time when full policy strength is needed to turn the Pacific Islands Forum Boy Declaration on Regional Security into action. Recent UN action under the Secretary General's Peace Building Fund is a key step up to strengthen treatment of the link between climate and security. We now need to address with our own direct Pacific voices geopolitical tension 
to ensure that our democratic island priorities drive our future free of external influence and coercion. Climate impacts pose a grave security challenge alone, but tackling them with core institutions under external stress, coupled with our underlying fragility, risks a big disaster. Madam President, Russia's continued aggression against Ukraine is a threat to basic democratic norms, human rights, and international accountability. As island democracies and as vulnerable nations in the shadow of changing geopolitics, the war in Ukraine is of great concern to the Pacific Islands as though Eastern Europe was next door. Madam President, the Marshall Islands look forward to the upcoming high-level visit of the Pacific Islands Forum Troika Plus grouping to New Caledonia. In addition, we support ongoing forum engagement with Indonesia and West Papua to better understand stakeholders and to ensure human rights. Madam President, if we are truly serious that no one is left behind, the UN would not be blinded to Taiwan's efforts and partnership towards achievement of the SDGs. Only this independent democratic government can represent its 23 million people. UN Resolution 2758 does not mention Taiwan and should not be used as a pretext to exclude Taiwan from participating meaningfully in the UN system. This resolution has been misused to threaten cross-strait and regional peace and security. This was never its original intent. It cannot serve as a sound basis to prohibit Taiwanese citizens and journalists from serve from the UN premises. The UN Secretariat should maintain neutrality and should not be complicit in limiting media freedom. Madam President, as key risks worsen in and around the world, multilateralism must be strengthened. For small and vulnerable nations, the United Nations, despite all its faults, remains the only institution which offers us a vital platform to voice our concerns, issues, and at times seek shelter from the ravages of conflicts and climate change. The word multilateralism can be expressed in the Marshallese proverb, Warin Kangal, meaning the coral where all the fish congregate to seek shelter and feed. Let us all nourish and maintain it for ourselves and future generation. Mr. President, the United Nations is that very coral. Warin Kangal. Kami berharap informasi ini memberikan pemahaman yang lebih dalam tentang isu-isu hak asasi manusia di Papua. Jangan lupa untuk subscribe dan ikuti kami untuk pembaruan selanjutnya. Sampai jumpa di video berikutnya.